Welcome. So I'm going to get us started. I expect more people will come in. Um, and as people come in, I'm going to keep reminding people to please mute yourself as you come in. I mean, I'm capable of muting everybody, but if you mute yourselves, then it's easier for you to unmute yourselves if you want to speak later on. So thanks and welcome. And I just need to check and see, is there anybody else on a telephone? Not right this moment. Okay. Um, Actually, Beth, could you sort of keep an eye out as people come in, if there's anybody else who comes in with the phones that we need to rename on the screen, that'd be helpful. Um, and uh, so, hi, welcome. I'm Mary McClintock. I'm on the planning board. I'm one of the members of the planning board. Welcome um, to our information session about river corridor issues. Um, I wanna introduce the folks who are on the planning board and then do a little housekeeping and explain, you know, sort of the agenda and how we're going to do things tonight. And um, then we'll start with then we'll start with presentations and things. So um, Beth Gershman is the chair of the planning board. She's hiding behind a picture, a lovely picture of California Hills, I think, right now. Um, and Jen Mullins is the vice chair of the planning board. Susan Fenton, wave your hand about in me. And Bill Mabius, we're all members of the planning board. And Joe Strugowski has honored us with his presence as an associate member, has continued on as an associate member. So this is that's that's us for the planning board. I'll introduce our speakers a little bit later. So housekeeping. Here's the housekeeping things you need to know. Um, we are recording this. Um, we are recording this session, and it will be made available to people later on by, you know, on the town website. So, um, so just know that it's being recorded. Um, I also know that Mary Byrne from the recorder is here. A reporter is here in the present. Um, is there anyone else from the media here? Will you please unmute yourself and identify yourself if you're anybody else from the media is present? No, well, guess the New York Times didn't come. Okay, so, um, so and folks, as I've already told about Robert Nowak, um, who's called in on the phone, but um, that star six is the way to mute and unmute yourself. And, um, and I'll explain later how to raise your hand. So what we're going to do this evening, um, we're going to have some we're going to have some speakers and presentations, and then we're going to have time for questions and comments. Please hold your questions and comments till after both of the presenters have finished, um, and um, you know, and you can hold on to them. You know, maybe write yourself a note, um, and then um, if you want to, um, if you want to make a comment or a question. Um, as we're going through the presentations, please put your name in the chat box and say, you know, Mary McClintock, I want to comment or something like that. Um, because we'll then keep a list of the folks who want to comment. And when we get, when we get to the questions and comments time, what we're going to, we'll go in the order of questions and comments from the planning board, then folks who are on the phone and don't have the opportunity to, uh, put them, their names in the chat. And then the folks who have indicated in the chat. Um, also know that, you know, if two hours after this meeting, you come up with a comment or a question, you're always welcome to send us comments at planningboard at townofconway.com. Um, planningboard at townofconway.com. Um, and so that's the housekeeping. I think that's pretty clear. People know that makes sense. Oh, I, and anybody who's on the, on the, um, showing their videos. I love positive, you know, like nods or thumbs up or things like that. I, you know, it's not as fun as sitting in a meeting in person, but I love feedback. So here's the introduction to the evening. This is, this information session is an opportunity for the board to pre both present information and get input on important concerns that have the potential to impact our entire community. Tonight, we're focusing on issues related to the rivers and streams in Conway and the lands alongside them. Conway Town Administrator Tom Hutchinson will talk about the recent Municipal Vulnerabilities Report and Hazard Mitigation Plan for Conway. Kimberly McPhee of the Franklin County Regional Council of Governance will present about Conway area river corridors, 
fluvial erosion and dangers posed to important municipal infrastructure such as road and bridges. Then we'll have time for questions and comments. Um, to set some context for tonight's conversation, um, actually, Michelle, I didn't tell you that you were going to be up now, but are you up? Are you ready to be up now? Because um, Michelle Touré from the Friends of the South River is going to show us some video footage from flooding caused by Hurricane Irene. So this gives us a little context of what we're talking about when we're talking about issues along rivers. Um, okay. Michelle, you want me to share my screen? Share your screen and share the video, please. And I'm going to mute myself. Yeah, this is uh, this is really something else. So that's Academy Hill oh. Road. Water is coming down the road and heading down Main Street and a little bit up Elm Street. Yes, I drove by this at this point and saw that wood pile floating by. It's memorable. So Michelle, this is water that came that came from where did it come in there? Well, they were standing in front of the library and the water was coming down Academy Hill Road because Pumpkin Hollow Brook overflowed and heading down Main Street. And then of course the bridge over Main Street um, down closer to the post office near Shelburne Falls Road, that bridge the abutment washed all out on the upstream side and the water was kind of overflowing and going down there as well. Okay, thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you. So that's just a little visual to give some context. Thanks so much, Michelle. Um, so um, our first presenter tonight is Tom Hutchison, who's our town administrator, and he's going to talk about um, municipal vulnerabilities, preparedness, and stuff like that. Um, Michelle, could you please mute yourself? Hi, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming out to this. Uh, there's some great work that's being done. And what I'd like to do is give you a, a kind of a broad view of some of the planning that's gone on over the last few years uh, so that you can see sort of where, the, where this fits into uh, some of the, the longer term planning that the town has been doing. Um, of course, the town has known there have been risks for South River flooding, especially when the dam burst just west of town. That was some time ago and problems haven't really gotten better. In fact, they've gotten worse because of, uh, you know, more severe weather. Uh, so this concern is now reflected in two planning documents, two recent planning documents, our hazard mitigation plan HMP, you might see some places, uh, which is a all hazards plan, and uh, a new initiative called the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Plan, or MVP plan, which uh, is focused uh, entirely on uh, mitigating the effects of climate change. Uh, as we complete these plans, we not only raise local awareness of environmental risks, but it allows us to apply for grants that address the plan's purposes and the goals and objectives identified in the plans. These plans are available on the website, uh, townofconway.com. And if you go under government in the menu and then departments and town administrator, uh, scroll, they're, they're uh, close to the bottom. There are links to both of those plans. Uh, the Hazard Mitigation Plan, or HMP, is a five-year emergency management plan that identifies risks of all kinds 
and provide strategies and tasks for addressing them. Conway enlisted the Franklin Regional Council of Governments to facilitate the process and draft the plan. The prior one was completed in 2014 and the most recent one dates from 2019-2020. The HMP not only identifies but also ranks what the town believes are the most hazardous risks and provides guidance on addressing those risks. In Conway, these are natural disaster risks. Uh, the HMP contains 32 recommendations. 22 of those are related to critical facilities and infrastructure. Other item categories are local plans and regulations and education and awareness. The HMP is the plan needed for our FEMA pre-disaster mitigation plan grant for improving the drainage on Delabar Avenue, which is listed in the plan under critical facility and infrastructure. Uh, we have yet to have final word that we've been granted the funds, uh, but it's looking good. This has been at least a three-year process for us. Uh, the HMP also identifies the parties responsible for working on the various goals. The planning board has been identified as the group to work on several items within the local plans and regulations category, and also one in education and awareness. Uh, in that category, the plan calls for the planning board to conduct outreach to residents about the flood mitigation benefits of managing and protecting lands in the village corridor and review corridor maps with residents at public meetings and incorporate the maps into town plans, such as the open space and recreation plan. The HMP also calls for the planning board to adopt a river corridor protection zoning overlay district to reduce the risk of flooding and fluvial erosion hazards and damage to infrastructure from high flow and flooding events in the South River, as well as encourage the use of nature-based solutions for new development and review and amend the town's floodplain district. The Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Plan was approved in June of 2018. This is a state initiative to plan for the effects of climate change. We entered into this as a partner with Ashfield and determined the town's top hazards to be extreme water, extreme wind, extreme temperature, and dam failure. That being specifically the, the Ashfield Dam at Ashfield Lake. Uh, it has 37 high priority recommendations, 22 moderate priority recommendations, and 17 lower priority recommendations. With those, the plan demonstrates the level of local concern regarding climate change and the variety of responses desired. Three of the highest priority recommendations targeted for Conway have been completed. Moving the highway garage, creating, or that's almost completed, creating forest management plans that include climate change considerations and supporting the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. Some others, such as stream bank stabilization work on Shelburne Falls Road and culvert work are being addressed by this MVP project. And it wasn't Conway that actually got this grant, it was the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. And it's, a, it's quite a large grant, you'll hear about, uh, from Kimberly about that. Um, but Conway being an MVP town um, uh, and, and due to the FERCOD's uh, quick thinking, got ourselves uh, into this grant. And so we're being funded through the MVP uh, program. Uh, again, these plans are available on the website under government, departments, town administrator. And uh, I'm sure Kimberly can answer a lot of questions about those as well. Um, and I'm available uh, at, uh, you can email selectboard at townofconway.com and I'll see that um, or uh, call. I'm at extension three at the town office. Uh, I hope that lets you know a little bit about what the town has been doing and where this uh, particular meeting and, and project fits in to our long-term plans for addressing natural hazards, especially in the context of climate change. 
Thanks, Tom. And I, I also, um, I put links. So he told you how to navigate it through the town website to get to those, where those plans are. But I also put the direct links to those, um, both that hazard mitigation plan and the municipal vulnerabilities preparedness plan. Um, I, I, there are direct links to those in the, um, uh, in the chat box. And um, remember that we're gonna we're gonna shift now from Tom's presentation to Kimberly's presentation, and then we will take comments and questions. So write yourself notes. Um, and as if you as you think of, I want to be able to make a comment or a question, you can write that in the chat. Um, Beth will be keeping track of that list for after Kimberly speaks. Um, and I, I may be leaving early, but Kimberly knows more than I do about both of those plans. So I'm sure she can okay. take any yeah. questions. Yes, thank you, Tom, for being here. Tom has Tom has the fun of going to another meeting at 7.30. So um, uh, that's why he needs to step away. And um, we appreciate Kimberly being here. So uh, Kimberly, are you ready to roll? Um, and you should be able to share screen and um, okay. Um, I will uh, start doing that and I'm going to go into full screen um, mode in PowerPoint. So hopefully you'll be able to see the entire slide, but if there's a problem, Mary, let me know and I can um, switch. Sure, I will, <clears throat> I will lay it out. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, there we go. So I'm really happy to be here tonight and thanks Tom for the background that you offered on the MVP plan and the hazard mitigation plan. Um, the work that I'm going to be talking about tonight really began um, right after Tropical Storm Irene. So it's been about a decade now that the COG has been working with the towns of Ashfield and Conway um, on I assessing and identifying climate resilient strategies for the South River watershed. As Tom mentioned, this project um, is kind of under the umbrella of the MVP program and an action grant was awarded to um, several communities that are part of the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. So flooding is the most common natural hazard in Massachusetts. And when we think about flooding and the damages that occur, um, you know, thinking about that video that Michelle just showed us, um, those are what are called inundation hazards. That's like the bathtub effect, right? Um, a severe rain event comes, the river level starts to rise and the water spills out over its banks and covers the land. There are also other hazards related to flooding which are really important to consider. And Conway certainly has seen fluvial erosion hazards or river related erosion hazards. And so these pictures show um, the area upstream of the Route 116 bridge in downtown Conway. And these are unfortunately very good examples of um, erosion ha hazards. So in the past, and I'm talking you know, many, many uh, decades, the uh, typical engineering response to these erosion hazards um, has been to build retaining walls like the Gabion basket retaining wall seen here. But the problem with these armored solutions, these kind of band-aid approaches, or just focusing on a site that um, is threatened or imperiled, they typically fail and they fail again and they fail again and they fail again. And so the question we have to ask ourselves is, is this cycle going to uh, continue to be repeated? And the answer is yes. And especially when we start thinking about climate change and how climate change is bringing 
more uh, intense, more frequent, and more severe storm events. So floods are gonna occur, we know that. Um, so what can we do? Like what can be a response that is more sustainable than what we've been doing um, in the past? So the first step is to expand our focus to look at the entire river system and all of its watershed lands. And that's why it's been so critical to have the town of Ashfield because Conway shares a watershed um, and the South River with Ashfield be a part um, of this work that we've been doing. The other thing we need to think about is a more sustainable and a science-based approach to the river and to river management um, problems or river management solutions. Um, we, our goal is to really reduce the conflicts that are occurring between the river and the built environment and to protect and restore the river system, um, help it be more stable. And I'm gonna talk a bit uh, more about the science behind the work that's been uh, done over the past decade. So the scientific discipline that studies how rivers interact with their landscape, how they interact with the land around them, how they respond to human development and human use of the landscape, that science is the science of fluvial geomorphology. And so the important thing, the important takeaway here is that that science considers the entire watershed and the entire river system. So any type of climate resiliency projects um, and management strategies for the river and for the, the watershed, if they're grounded in the science of fluvial geomorphology, there are many, many benefits to that approach. Um, reduction in flooding and erosion hazards and um, therefore reductions in the threats to infrastructure, houses, and land. Um, also, many of the restoration techniques that are grounded in fluvial geomorphology uh, improve aquatic habitat, and we'll talk a bit about that later. This approach also encourages this holistic identification um, of problem areas and protection of these um, areas and strategies that prevent um, or help mitigate these problems. And we're not transferring the problem from one site to another, which is what happens when you armor a bank, when you put in big riprap or retaining walls, or you use hard structures to stop the erosion. You're just transferring the problem either upstream or downstream or both. So Conway and Ashfield and the South River are really um, very much at the leading edge of this uh, type of work. The fluvial geomorphic assessment that was done for the South River was the first of its kind in Massachusetts. Vermont has a very robust rivers program and it has been doing this science-based river management work for several decades now. And so what we've been doing in the South River watershed is taking those techniques and those lessons learned and um, modifying them for use in Massachusetts and applying them in Massachusetts. So what this study found, and this study is available on the Friends of the South River website. It's probably also maybe someplace on the town website as well. I mean, it came out about seven years ago, um, is that the South River, and you, you know, I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know because you live in town, um, is very unstable. Um, it's very flashy. It's very reactive to rainfall events. It's disconnected from its floodplain and the river habitat is um, very degraded. And that's because the South River has been impacted by historic and current land uses. I mean, we're talking, we're going back several centuries when the land was denuded of trees. Um, the river is still responding to uh, the sediment load that was um, delivered and continues to be delivered to the river from that activity. There were also over 30 mills and dams in the watershed, which, um, impact the river as well. And, there, and even though many of these dams are gone now, 
there's still the legacy of all the sediment um, and the straightening that was done, for example, to accommodate many of the, um, the mills that dotted the South River back, uh, you know, in the heyday of the um, Industrial Revolution. Also, boulders and wood have been removed um, over the decades because the thought was if you cleared the channel out, it would help with flood control, but we know, um, we know better now. Also in this historic picture, you can see how straight the river is. Rivers do not like straight runs like this. They don't like right angle bends like you see in this picture. So rivers need room. They are dynamic natural systems that, and their work, if you will, is to transport water and sediment. So changes in the amount of water and sediment due to land use like clearing um, that was done or straightening the channel or putting a dam in will change that sediment and water load and the river um, will res respond to that. So when you can see in these um, diagrams of two river systems in Vermont that are just really great examples of how much a river can move over time. And if you look at the bottom one, I think my cursor is probably showing up, but you can see in 1924, the White River was very straight, right? And so something happened, I don't know what, maybe they took a dam out or, or they just let the river um, do what it wanted to do. And so you can see over time how much that river has changed its position. And, and in that change, it's eroding its uh, banks, it's depositing sediment. Um, it's trying to be, you know, to become more in, equilibri in equilibrium with um, the landscape and the water and sediment load that it's carrying. So when you think about the fact that a river needs room, a river is a natural system that's gonna move across the landscape. It's gonna intersect with human development and you know, potentially threaten um, bridges, roads, homes, businesses. Um, what can we do? Uh, well, the one management strategy is to take a look at the river corridor. So this is an area that is delineated using the science of fluvial geomorphology. And this area includes the active river channel where the river is right now and portions of the floodplain or adjacent land, the riparian area where the river is expected to move over time. And that time period could be quite, quite large or it could be quite small. We can't necessarily predict like in five years, the river's going to move 20 feet. I mean, that could happen in one, you know, huge rain event, it might move that much, or it could take decades to move. But this is that area, this is that room that the river needs. So in Massachusetts, we have two um, corridors, if you will, will, or two areas along the river that we already regulate. One is the 200 Riverfront area that's part of the Wetlands Protection Act. And that's just a linear setback from the river of 200 feet. We also have the 100 year floodplain that is regulated um, uh, and it, it part of the National Flood Insurance Program. So people who need flood insurance, um, it's based on their location in the 100 year floodplain. And the town already has um, a bylaw that regulates that area because they have to in order to participate in the flood insurance program. But a river corridor is very different from these two areas because it can vary in width. It's based on a um, different set of scientific principles and delineation techniques. And it's very different from a buffer or a setback. And so this figure really shows that quite well, I think. Um, this is in Conway Center, and you can see that the 100-year floodplain area along the South River is this light blue area, and the river corridor is shown in this darker blue area. 
So in some places, the river corridor is actually quite a bit bigger than the 100-year floodplain. In other areas, maybe not so much. Um, and in some areas, maybe the 100-year floodplain is actually a bit bigger than the river corridor. So a river corridor map shows, the, the, again, the room that the river needs and the land that is vulnerable to flooding and fluvial erosion hazards, whereas the 100-year floodplain that's mapped does not address fluvial erosion hazards. So what are our options? Well, we can manage the river channel with bank stabilization and armoring projects. And we can see that, especially with the example in um, Conway Center, that hasn't been successful. Um, we can implement restoration projects that address the, the river instabilities and the degraded river functions. Um, and I'll talk about those a bit later because we have those identified. We can remove or relocate locate structures threatened by flooding and fluvial erosion, but that's pretty, you know, impractical. Impract it's very expensive. So really the strategy um, is avoidance. And that's where the planning board um, comes in because one of the avoidance strategies is a river corridor protection overlay district. Another avoidance strategy that we can talk about um, at another meeting is a river corridor easement. And um, the FERCOG is working with the Franklin Land Trust on a river corridor easement. And that's really an exciting tool to, um, again, you know, prevent uh, new development from happening in these vulnerable areas in the river corridor. So a river corridor protection overlay district will help um, the town avoid the risk of flooding and fluvial erosion by limiting new development in the river corridor. It will also break this um, cycle of increasing flood damages and costly repairs and will prevent further encroachment into the river corridor, which has benefits. Um, you minimize the fluvial erosion hazards, minimize property losses from flooding and erosion, enhance public safety. I mean, if a bridge washes out or a culvert washes out um, because the floodplain, the river doesn't have access to its floodplain, for example, you know, you could um, lose uh, an important evacuation route or a portent, an important road for providing emergency services. Um, preventing further encroachment into the river corridor will help um, stabilize the river channel, the river itself, and maintain um, or improve water quality and habitat function. So a river corridor protection overlay district is something that literally, you know, lies over top of or is um, superimposed over the existing zoning districts. So, and um, by definition, an overlay district has more stringent um, requirements than the underlying zoning has. It's like this extra layer of protection. So the purpose of the river corridor overlay district is to limit new development and control the expansion or alteration of existing structures because there are many existing structures in Conway that are already in the mapped river corridor. So this map um, that's showing on the slide um, is a map of the river corridor that was prepared. And there are the different colors kind of show the sensitivity rating um, of the fluvial erosion hazards. This is a, um, you know, an electronic digital GIS data layer. So it can easily be um, overlain, for example, with the parcel, um, boundary information that the town has with their zoning map. Um, you know, for planning purposes, GIS is just such an amazing tool. Um, and so different boards and commissions in town can, um, you know, apply this river corridor data layer uh, in many different ways. So back to the overlay district. Um, 
So the FERCOG developed a model river corridor protection overlay district that can be used in Massachusetts. So we worked with a lawyer to make sure that there aren't any provisions in the overlay district that are gonna compete or um, cause problems between the two already regulated areas along rivers, the riverfront area and the Wetlands Protection Act and the um, 100 year floodplain um, that's you know, part of FEMA and the National Flood Insurance Program. So the model overlay district contains um, performance standards and requirements that apply to all new construction, reconstruction, alteration or expansion of existing buildings. And again, that's important um, because there's already so much development that's in the river corridor. There are a few uh, permitted new uses, and then um, the list for uses that can happen um, require a special permit. So by definition, the model river corridor protection overlay district that the COG developed is, is really the most stringent, right? It's the strictest. The town of Conway could adopt it as it is, but really, you know, the, um, a model is a good starting point for the town of Conway to have discussions like we're having now to learn more about the tool and to customize it for the town and to meet the town's needs if um, there is interest, you know, in moving forward with an overlay district. So I just want to be very clear about that is that, you know, the town has a lot of flexibility and a lot of latitude to adapt the, uh, the model to suit their needs. So in our toolkit, in our climate resilient toolkit, and actually, you know, spoiler alert, there are many, you know, additional tools, but I just wanted to, you know, I was asked to focus on the river corridor protection overlay district, and then to talk um, a bit about the river restoration projects that have been previously um, identified. And then I'm going to talk um, kind of about the, the benefits of, of those because the current grant that we have and the work that the COG is doing um, with the town is focusing on advancing um, some of these previously identified projects. So kind of switching gears a little bit, um, these river restoration projects can address, um, you know, a very site-specific uh, site concern, right? Like the, um, you know, the, the washout that we saw above the um, 116, Route 116 bridge in Conway Center. They can stabilize eroding river banks. They can help reduce the flooding and erosion threats um, to roads, houses, and farms. Um, they boost the town's climate resiliency um, by reducing these hazards. And again, restore degraded river habitat and move the river towards a more stable condition. So the river restoration uh, techniques, the treatment types, they mimic natural rivers. So if you were to look at a river that, you know, was untouched by any human, you know, intervention or development in its watershed, these techniques are trying to mimic that and recreate that. So natural uh, materials like boulders and wood are used as part of these techniques. And then um, bank cutting, or allowing the river to have access to abandoned floodplain. Um, that's a very successful technique. Uh, removing berms, oftentimes rivers, as they were channelized, you know, berms were put up to keep, you know, the river kind of in its place. Um, we now know that creating these um, straight runs of the river with, you know, confined banks only increases the velocity of the floodwaters and only increases um, the erosion and the flooding risks. So the South River Meadow project was um, completed uh, in 2016. And this is a project 
downstream, here's the Route 116 bridge here. Um, this it shows the original conceptual design of the pro project. What was built um, was this section of the project here. You see this area outlined in red. That is um, an area that was carved out it to reconnect um, the river to its floodplain. Right now, all of this floodplain land is considered disconnected. The river is disconnected from it because it's like dug down its bank, its bed so far that even uh, during high flows, it's hard for it to access its floodplain. And you can see that there were boulder um, deflectors, they're called, that were installed and um, wood material was added to stabilize this uh, eroding bank and to direct high flows away from the frail bank um, into the center of the river channel and also into this newly um, reconnected floodplain area. So Michelle um, has taken some great pictures that I'm gonna show you the next couple of slides of this project um, in action. And this, these pictures were taken during the big storm that we had over Christmas where all of our snow melted and we had you know, torrential rains. And so if you're looking at this picture, uh, the river is flowing from right to left down past this house. And this area that's kind of covered with leaves and you know, vegetation and wood, this is that reconnected floodplain area. And here is, is the field that's at a higher elevation. And so you can see that the, that the water, that this functioned as it was designed, the river level rose, the water came into this uh, floodplain area, the water slowed down, sediment dropped out, wood dropped out, um, quite a bit of sediment dropped out. This is exactly what it was supposed to do. Um, and here's another shot of it. Um, here's the floodplain, the reconnected floodplain area. So she's standing looking across that at the bank that was stabilized. And you can see, you know, that this isn't big ginormous riprap or some, you know, gabion basket wall like we saw in the pictures of, um, you know, upstream in Conway Center. This is natural woody material that was used to stabilize this bank. And so somebody looking at this who didn't know anything about Conway or anything about the South River probably wouldn't even know that this project was constructed. It looks so natural. So I wanna talk a bit about um, projects that we're working on under this current grant that we are um, working to complete the final um, engineering designs. We have uh, an engineering uh, consultant, GZA, who's working with a fluvial geomorphologist um, consulting firm, Field Geology Services. And so we've been through a process uh, to identify kind of the most um, promising next set of projects that we can advance to final design um, and uh, cost estimates so that if additional grant funding is secured, that these projects can be um, built. So just to orient people, here, um, here's Conway Center. And then if you follow the river downstream, so here's the project that we were just looking at, the South River Meadow. Um, and this is Google Maps. You can see like how straight the river is through here. Oops, right angle bend. Oops, another right angle bend. So anyway, you travel along Shelburne Falls Road and here, here's the area right here that I will show you um, first with a, another shot of using Google Maps. Um, it's a satellite image. So if you look at this, 
you can see, okay, the river is coming through here. It's hard up against the road. It kind of goes a little ways away from the road and then it's hard up against the road again. Um, this area here is actually an old abandoned meander or an old abandoned bend in the river, if you will. Um, so the projects, and this is a, a lot of information here. It's actually three, maybe four, it's actually three projects um, that are all connected. And again, you know, I mentioned how this science-based approach uh, to identifying projects and doing work is considering the whole system. It's not just putting a Band-Aid on one problem area. So this project, so this column that's kind of in this light tan color is the list of um, problems that will be addressed by the project. So there's um, a straightened reach through here. Um, it's carrying you know, high velocity floodwaters, a lot of sediment causing problems downstream, natural roots is further downstream. Um, you can't see it on this map. There's an active mass failure, a big erosion um, scar or face, if you will, that threatens um, Shelburne Falls Road. There's um, lack of riparian buffer and erosion that's happening in these other areas. So, the um, the project is and it's quite it's quite complicated and I'm just giving you kind of a very high level overview is to um, encourage the river to reaccess this old it, uh, abandoned meanders are called oxbows to kind of reroute it back into its former channel as well as do some riparian plantings, stabilize the eroding bank. And then there's also, um, there, we're evaluating what a bank treatment would be right here. So in talking to the landowners um, about this project, a lot of things um, have come up and a lot of questions, a lot of good information um, one thing is that the farmers use, there's an existing ford where the, far, the farmers use that to cross the river and access these fields. Um, and also I'll show you in the next slide, there is a, um, uh, the fire department um, uses, you know, uh, withdraws water from the South River for firefighting purposes. So any work that is done here um, would need to provide uh, another source of um, water and another access point for the fire department. Um, there is a culvert here. So the way the river is going to be um, diverted uh, or encouraged to go back into this old channel is to have an engineered log jam and um, so there will be, um, you know, during certain flows, um, more water will be, tr you know, going around kind of in this loop here. So these, you know, I show you these slides and just talk about this at a very kind of high level to, um, share that these projects, um, even though we're using natural materials and mimicking natural systems, there is a great deal of um, engineering and science, river science that goes into these projects. And um, they have been, you know, very successfully used in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and other uh, states across the country. And we're starting to see them used, um, you know, more and more here in Massachusetts. And 
So it's a very exciting, um, very um, kind of, you know, I, I want to say cutting edge, but um, it's an approach that the state is embracing and encouraging with their new um, municipal vulnerability preparedness, their new MVP program. So it's just really exciting to be part of this work um, with the town of Conway. And I have to you know, say that the Friends of the South River and um, town staff and volunteers that I've been working with um, and the consultant team has been working with so far have just uh, been, been really great and devoted a lot of um, time and you know, ongoing time and energy to the project. Thanks, Kimberly. Um, actually, will you unshare now? Um, I sure will. Your screen. Thanks so much. Welcome back to Hollywood <laughs> Squares. Um, we're here. Um, so welcome back. Thanks so much, Kimberly. That for that's like a whole lot of information. I have a little bit of mental indigestion, but you know, a lot of a lot of great information there. I really appreciate that. So what I want to let folks know is sort of remind them what the process is now. First of all, I would ask if you haven't already had a chance to do so, please sign in. You know, it's sort of like signing the clipboard that goes around at, at information sessions. Please sign in by putting your name and your where you live in the chat. And also, I want to clarify for folks um, that the in terms of a river corridor protection overlay district that Kimberly was talking about, and there was the model, you know, plan and all that want to let you know that as, as a planning board, this is our first information session. We're learning in this process and we will have discussions about this in the planning board. And if we decide that we want to go ahead with doing something like an overlay district, that would be a zoning bylaw change. And that would mean um, that we would probably have another information session, definitely would have a public hearing. It would need to go to town meeting. So we just want to let you know that we're in this, you know, very early stage of, of conversation about this. So that's just a little context. So now, um, as I said earlier, what we're going to do now is we're going to ask you that if you would like to, um, if you would like to, um, uh, you know, have make a comment, ask a question of Kimberly. Um, that you put your name in the chat and say, um, and you say, you know, I want to make a comment in the chat. Um, and, um, and I, um, yeah, and in terms, yes. And so, so it's not that you should be writing your question in the chat or your comment in the chat. You should say, I have a question or I have a comment and then I will call on folks to ask their questions out loud. Cause you know, this is, it's it's not like you're gonna pass this, you know, if we're sitting in town hall, you're not gonna hand me a piece of paper with your question, you're gonna say it out loud. So we'll do that. But so here's here's the way. So please, if you're interested in having, um, in making a question, you know, having a question, making a chat, a, a comment, please put your name in the chat. Um, and what we're gonna do first is I ask if there are any comments or questions from the planning board then I'm gonna give, um, I think right now, Robert Nowak is the only person on the telephone. I'm gonna give him a chance to ask questions. And then we'll go to the folks who've indicated in the chat. And Beth is creating a list for me and of people who've said, yes, I, you know, I see Phil Cantor says he has questions. That's exactly the kind of thing I want you to do. So, and, and um, Beth will be generating a list of those folks and then I'll call on folks. And um, I want to point out that um, in terms of questions and comments, we are, this meeting goes until nine o'clock at the very latest, because um, we turn into pumpkins after that. And um, so wanting to make sure that when people make comments or questions that you're as concise as you can be. And also people also know that you can always send um, additional comments or questions to us at Planning Board at Town of Conway. So, so clear about, um, clear about uh, what the process is. I get some nods or some thumbs up or some whatever. Okay, I like the, like the nonverbals. All right, so um, planning board folks, um, 
that's, you know, Beth, Susan, Bill, uh, Joe, Jen, um, do you have any, do you have any comments or questions to make? Jen, I see Jen just unmuted herself. No, no, I just wanted to say it was really, really, really informative and wonderful. Yeah, thanks. Okay. And, and thanks uh, very much for the video too. That was super helpful. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Any other comments or questions from the planning board? Nope. Um, Robert Nowak, do you have any uh, comments or questions you'd like to make? If you'd like to talk, uh, just hit star six to unmute yourself. Um, am I on? You're on. Go for it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was just, I want to inform the, the Conway Cons Conservation Commission about this meeting. Uh, I really don't have very many questions. I didn't know what we were going to talk about, so now I do. And uh, it's very interesting. Like you said, it's the beginning stages. And, you know, I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. No, that's about it. Okay. So I'm signing off. Thank you. Thanks. So star six, to meet yourself again. Good job. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I know it's it can be a little challenging sometimes when you're on a phone. Um, so um, I am... I'm going to go back. I think that Elaine Campbell was the first name I see on the list, um, who's listed as Dr. C, I believe. Um, Elaine, are you there? Please unmute yourself. And um, uh, I'm here. Okay. Okay. So my question is about the uh, very specific area of uh, Conway Station Road and the intersection of the Deerfield River and the South River seems to be an especially vulnerable corridor. And um, I was on CONCOM for nine years and uh, was always trying to put forward that that whole area has very particular um, value in terms of historic, recreational, and as a watershed. And I would think this would be a great time to look at that and consider putting this in this overlay. Thanks. If it isn't already. Um, Kimberly- Is that area being considered? Kimberly, do you have information about that? Yes. Yeah, so. I Based on what you're describing, um, I would assume that uh, there is um, all or a large portion of that area that's in the mapped river corridor because the corridor starts at the Ashfield Lake Dam and extends all the way down to the confluence of the South River with the Deerfield River. So I can... Um, I can talk to Tom Hutchison and um, Mary, and maybe there's a way, the planning board, there's a way to uh, create a simple map that could be posted. So if that sounds like a good idea, that could be posted for, for folks to, <clears throat> to see. Yeah. Some of it is, is uh, state land. And some of it, the town has uh, purchased the uh, building rights to um, just in the last few years from, uh, from the Totmans. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still a pretty good section that is privately owned that seems like it's in a, it's in a very vulnerable area that could be uh, considered for development in the future, which would be a real shame. Those are really those are really good points. Um, and so, will there be uh, notes that I can access? Yes. Mary, after the meeting? Yes. So we're going to have we will have um, minutes from this. Um, we'll have notes there. Also, the recording will be available. And hopefully, actually, Kimberly, if you could make a PDF of your slides, that we could also make those available. Okay. Um, and. Again, reminding everybody that this is a beginning information session. And so any comments or questions or particular areas you're concerned about, whatever, 
planningboard.tanofconway.com is a great way to get that information to us. Um, so thanks, thanks Elaine or Dr. C as you're called, I guess. On Sorry, this. That, that, that's, that's my work, work, work <laughs> title. Looks, it looks like you're the DJ or something, like we're gonna Sorry, get kind of fancy music or something. Okay, <laughs> thanks so much. Susan, Susan Fenton had a, Susan Fenton, I'm sorry I missed you in the planning board sections. Go ahead. That's all right. I just wanted to let the Conservation Commission know that this is being recorded. And if you wanted to be able to play this meeting for the Conservation Commission, that would be great. But also, as, as Mary pointed out, uh, Kimberly is going to make a PDF of the slides. And um, that will also probably be helpful for the Conservation Commission. I just wanted to mention. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Susan. Phil Cantor. Uh, good evening, everybody. So um, the, the, I have a few questions. The first is um, the, nothing about uh, funding sources or uh, anticipated cost of these pro of, of this um, um, or, or, or and how that would be funded. So if we could speak a little bit about that. But then uh, and, and also I'd just like to speak. My understanding was the Hurricane Irene, the reason that the downtown flooded um, what was because of the overflow of Pumpkin Hollow Brook and the inability of that water to pass under uh, Academy Hill Road. And that that was, that was the primary reason that the, that the town flooded. And I don't, uh, t if, if there's a single infrastructure improvement, it would be expanding the capacity of the amount of water that can go underneath Academy Hill Road right there, I would think. I, I didn't see that addressed here anywhere. And then the, uh, the last thing I see Joe is ready to, to, to speak about this, but the, the last thing that I'd like to, to just point out is that if all of us were sitting in a room, well, and, and this is based on, on the reflection that when I looked at the, 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 the map of the river corridor overlay, the, the, the area that's the enlarged area of blue corresponds historically almost uh, perfectly with the damage from the 1869 uh, flooding in town and the 1938 flooding in town when every home situated in those blue areas was swept off its foundations and down the river and every bridge in there was swept off its foundations. And the, both of those floods um, were occasioned by failures of dams upstream that were called the Ashfield Dam at the time, even though one of them was in Conway. The, the, and if all of us were in a room trying to talking about what's the best thing we can do for our residents to protect um, fr from river everything, the answer would be in a vacuum would be let's do something about the Ashfield Dam. And I don't think people in our town realize how that dam has been downgraded just in the past couple of years, how that is now one of the most hazardous dams in the state, that how, how, um, Six years ago, the, this, that, it's owned by the town. Six years ago, the, the last uh, inspection report that they did, which is required to be done every other year, the last one they did was six years, identified over a million dollars in urgent repairs. And my entire time on the select board, every year we've co-signed with Ashfield on all kinds of grant applications to try to help them with their dam, whether it's MVP grants, whether it's uh, mass uh, works grants, whether it's DOT grants, whether it's letters to our senators, we, we've been doing, and I think we have created sort of a perverse incentive in that town not, not to do it at a local level and, and hope that, so, that, that somebody else comes to the rescue. But that dam, with that, that engineering report from Ty and Bond, I encourage everybody to read that on the Ashfield website and look about how the motility, the, the movement of that water has uh, risen to where it's termed alarming by the engineers. Look at, and, and you know, there, th th there are so many uh, things that, that need to be done to make that dam safe. And, and next time it's raining really hard, I encourage people to walk, go up to that dam, walk around outside in a hard rain, not even a really bad storm, just a regular hard rain like Christmas morning that dam leaks from its face in a way that is really scary right now. And um, that is the sort of Damocles that hangs over our town's head. And I called the DEP to ask about it. And, you know, litigation was recommended. Um, 
And I think that's kind of unneighborly, but uh, you know, I, I've been trying to work with Ashfield for a couple of years now to try to do something about this. And once again, I'm informed um, as they're preparing for their budget, they're not gonna have anything on it, it, at town meeting to want to, to address the cost of that dam. And that dam, if that fails, um, the river overlay district or not, we're gonna, that's gonna bring death and destruction to the town like nobody's seen since 1938. And the chances of that happening are greater right now than they have been since the day that that dam failed in 1938. So I'd love to see us as a group also try to tackle that one. But um, so yeah. Bill, Bill, you raised, you asked some questions and you raised yeah. some points. I'm going to call yeah. on Beth to make, Beth is going to respond for, to one thing you've said. And then Kimberly, I think, or Joe, the questions about funding and such. I mean, I was sort of, I, I was, looked like there was the whole thing about the Asheville Dam, but then there was question about funding um, for the projects on the river and the question about whether the Academy Hill Road um, Pumpkin Hollow Brook thing was on the priority list for action. I think those were your other two points. Is that true, Phil? And, that, and I also forgot to mention if you could talk a little bit in detail about how this, these proposals would affect private property rights in town. Okay. If you could be really right, specific so, about it. So clearly there's a lot there. So first I'm gonna to go to Beth and ask Beth to um, respond to stuff. Then Kimberly and Joe, if you'll respond to um, the questions about funding and specific site projects. And then I don't, and I guess maybe also private property uh, rights, but let's start with that. Beth, then. Okay, so um, yeah, I wanna acknowledge there's a lot, there's a lot here. And this is a limited time period right now. We do have some people from the Ashfield Planning Board attending tonight, and I don't want to put them on the spot at all. And I, I, I don't also don't want to leave this uh, exactly as it is, because I, I, I'm sure we're all passionate about, you know, not being downstream in a flood event. We don't want that. But Asheville doesn't want that either. And of course, they're working on this. Um, so uh, if there's anyone from Asheville who wants to respond briefly to this, um, uh, that would be fine to do. But um, otherwise, you know, this is something important, but it's a little bit outside of the scope of this particular information session. So um, that's what yeah. I have to say right now. <laughs> and, and, and I would say, right, I would also say that Phil and, and Bob and, you know, perhaps that's something the select board also could do some, you know, calling for conversation about that um, too. But okay, so Beth, so Beth, anything more from you or we're going to Kimberly and Joe with any comments about funding and and the Academy Hill Road thing? Is that next? Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring up a few questions or try to address some of Phil's concerns. One of the missing pieces of information for me, Phil, is uh, in the video, you saw all the lumber going down Elm Street. That came from Dave Potter's backyard, I've been told, which is on the South River side of Academy Hill Road. The funny story is that apparently Dave Potter turned Jake Kosmeski in because he thought he was stealing his firewood when in fact he taking it out of the road. So, but I, I don't know how the, I, I'm, it puzzles me how the wood from the, um, the South River side of Academy Hill Road ended up down on Elm Street if the water all came from Academy Hill. Are you saying the South River did not jump into Academy Hill Road? My, my from, from what I've been told is that that was sort of secondary to the, the, you know, the large amounts of water that swept over Academy Hill Road, then lifted up all of that as well. Well, as you know, we, we've had some problems in that area with access. 
But one of the things <laughs> we're trying to do with this funding is a uh, hydraulic analysis of that, the whole area uh, under investigation <laughs> from just above the uh, Main Street Bridge all the way down to the end of the project that Kimberly described. So we'd actually like to map the way the water flows in that whole area, which would be helpful for future projects and for the current projects. So, and Joe, could you, and Joe and or Kimberly, could you speak about um, the, like the funding for what's, what funding there is right now for specific work on the South River, like that encouraging the Oxbow thing and the, um, and anything else that is there? What's what's the state of funding with all that? Kimberly, are you going to handle that one? <laughs> I will. Yep. <laughs> so um, potential sources of funding include the MVP Programs Action Grant, which is funding this current work. Also, the Mass DEP's um, Section Three Nineteen Grant Program would. Um, fund the, the projects that we're describing. It um, helped fund the South River Meadow project. Um, there might even, you know, the, the town is currently applied to FEMA for the Delaware Avenue project. So um, that program is a potential uh, funding source as well. But, you know, since the town is likely uh, to get the Delabar Ave Avenue fund funding or project funded, fingers crossed, um, we wouldn't go that way. Um, grant programs always require a match. MVP requires 25%. Um, the FEMA grant programs, 25%. Uh, the 319 Mass DEP program requires a 40% match. Uh, so that can be a hurdle. Um, for small towns. Um, I did want to say too, in addition to Joe's um, mentioning the hydraulic model that's going to be done, uh, we do have river corridor areas mapped for the major tributaries uh, to the South River. So that includes Pumpkin Hollow Brook. The other uh, strategy that we're exploring in this current grant program or this with this current grant that we have is looking in the upstream areas of the watershed, right? If you can keep the water where it falls, or if you can keep it in areas that are undeveloped and forested, let's say, that's gonna reduce the amount of water that is coming into Conway Center and causing problems there. So we are, we are looking at that. Um, is there anything? Is there anything else? And then um, what was the fourth thing? I'm Okay, so the fourth thing that was um, uh, I don't know. Oh, I, you know, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm going to uh, or Susan, do you remember? Do you have a thought on that? Oh, I remember. I remember. Okay. Um, the thing you mentioned was property rights. Property rights. I just had a quick question. Kimberly, do you know if, if uh, Community Preservation Act money can be used for that kind of a match? Yes, it can. It was used um, to match the 319 grant for the South River Meadow project. So uh, with respect to private property rights, um, of course, any, you know, zoning that the, the town does, um, that the town currently has, that the town plans for the future um, is a, um, I think impingement is too strong a word, but it obviously impacts um, private property owners, right? Because the zoning is telling you what you can and cannot do on your property. And that's a whole, you know, discussion and process that the town through its planning board, if it decided to, you know, explore the river corridor protection overlay district would certainly be part of the conversation. The watershed lands are uh, primarily, um, predominantly privately owned, right? So any river restoration projects, any climate resiliency projects that we're talking about 
are going to be um, private landowners are essential to the success of those projects, unless the town, you know, owns the owns the property like they did with South River Meadow. So um, the people that I've been working with in town, friends of the South River folks and others have been doing that work. They've been talking to their um, neighbors. They've been talking to private, the landowners um, that you know own the property around those projects that I mentioned in my PowerPoint. Uh, we're talking to them because they have to be um, you know, on board with, with the projects and see the benefits um, and, and be part of that work, absolutely. Great. Thanks, Kimberly. So um, moving on to um, Bob Van Gelder, you had your name in the in the chat asking to make a comment or question. Wait, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, click the little unmute thing over in the, yep, there you go. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say, Kimberly, I was really impressed with your presentation. Um, in, in a past life, I did a master's in landscape architecture and regional planning, and this was great. You've sold me, uh, but I was sold beforehand because I've enjoyed the uh, South River Metal Project tremendously. Um, places like that address something that you need, I think, to add in findings, and that is human interaction, not just uh, building, okay, and doing agriculture, businesses, and such, but recreation. And Conway and this is pre-COVID, has seen an overflow of people coming to recreate on the South River. Um, let's say from fishermen's perspective, we've seen the overflow from the Westfield River, which is fished out. And so now they're coming to South River. That's where we're also seeing a lot of people going down uh, to the Bardwell's Ferry Bridge. Um, this has had, as my neighbors know, has had a real negative impact on our neighborhood. We have people basically treating private property as public land. And to detriment, I think, of the integrity of the river and eventually some of the town roads. Um, everyone knows about the, the little boy who nearly uh, lost his life down an illegal swimming hole down, down the road from me. Um, I've also um, personally taken down two three foot high stone dams that were built by adults right across the river. I don't know how many laws this violates to do that, but this is being done consistently. I'll just say, I don't have a problem with some, with laws not being enforced or stretched thin. And, uh, but something needs to be done to address that. On, on my property, um, I'm on the other end of that problem area. I communicate with the landowners, the Aldridges, and right where the uh, new bridge goes over the, um, South River at my property where um, Reeds Bridge Road crosses. Um, we've, in the last few years, we've had such an influx of people recreating and fishermen that we've, well, personally, we've lost our privacy, but also the bank on the other side is starting to erode from people walking down the slope. Um, the auditors uh, who own that property and the place where the swimming hole problem was have, have um, authorized me to post the land and, and watch it. Um, I need a connection if someone could help the town to, I talked to people of Fish and Wildlife about not stocking the river off that bridge. It invites fishermen from a lot of places over and it's, it's really a kiddie pool. It's not even a challenging fishing area. I emphasize this because the most um, significant fishing episode I saw there was two guys who show up with a big net and a five gallon bucket and plucked all the fish out. They weren't even fishermen. And it's as a fishing spot, it's kind of a joke. Um, so I get back to the South River Meadow project. That is a great place to fish off of. If you get to the end, there's a beautiful pool. If it's if it's stocked up river from there, I mean, I love that area. I walk it probably once a week. And uh, there is a public access on land that's not private. And we need more of that. We're going to see more people. We just can't turn them away. And uh, people need places to recreate. Uh, so that's, we're at the end of this project area. I, the next project that you 
that you've um, proposed, I think is really neat. Uh, bring that bend back. I think that's cool. I can't wait to see it happen. I can't wait to walk it when it's done. I'm sure it's going to enhance the area tremendously. Um, so there's just my comments I want to add. Um, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Um, Ruth Parnell. Ruth, are you there? Hi. Yes, we're unmuted. Uh, I thank you for the presentation. I um, noted the detail it went into uh, on the properties uh, downstream of the 116 bridge from the center of town. And you did mention, Kimberly, that the project really um, covered from Ashfield all the along the South River all the way to the Deerfield. And since, in my opinion, the greatest emergency management threat of uh, the South River to Conway is caused by the flooding in the town center, which cuts off three of the four roads that are important to the center to, to access um, in and out of the town. And uh, will the project be looking at floodplain release uh, upstream of the 116 bridge, especially in the center of town? And Michelle Ture has some interesting maps demonstrating uh, potential floodplain, but even farther upstream between Ashfield and Conway, will there be detailed study uh, to release the, the, the floodplains from which the river is now separated? Um, so Kimberly, do you want to respond? Sure. Yeah, those are great questions. And um, there were over 20 projects that were identified between the Ashfield Lake Dam and um, the, you know, the end of the South River where it em empties into the Deerfield. So over the years, we have no shortage of projects, um, many of which are, are the kind that you're, you described, Ruth, reconnecting the river to its floodplain. There are also conceptual designs for projects that include um, recreation um, amenities. Uh, Bob, there was a, a conceptual design done for the town-owned property um, around the covered bridge area. Yeah. So, but what, by necessity, because we only have a limited amount of funding, we had to whittle down that group of 20 plus projects to maybe three or four or five projects that we could do, um, get it to final design, get the engineering and the cost estimates and the hydraulic modeling done, you know, have some pre-permitting meetings. Um, so we went through a very complex exercise to prioritize which sites that we would move forward on. But that doesn't mean um, that these other ones um, are not, you know, have been forgotten. And you know, we'll go through another exercise if we get more funding to you know, prioritize the remaining sites. And again, you know, to Phil's point about uh, private property rights, if there are landowners along the river, along the South River, along the major tributaries who are on this um, meeting tonight and who are interested in learning more about projects you know, that we may have identified, and are interested in participating, you should definitely um, let me know because that's something that we need to have kind of um, early on in the process is a willing, interested landowner. Um, so Kimberly, um, will you please put your email address in the chat, sure. so in phone number so that if folks wanna contact you to talk about that, they can do that. Um, okay. Um, James Manuel, you are next on the list. Uh, yes, great. Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I joined late, so I hope I didn't, I'm not repeating myself or things that already happened. Uh, first of all, 
uh, regarding uh, Phil's comment. Uh, uh, very interesting comment. Um, uh, I live I live on Hickory Ridge Road, which is and uh, own the property where the Tucker and Cook Reservoir used to be. Uh, that I all, leave also failed in 1869, and was a source of a large amount of the water that went through the center of Conway. Uh, so I, I I had not heard about the Asheville Dam having failed at that time, but uh, wouldn't surprise me if they all went out. Um, but uh, that being the case, uh, I, I am concerned about the Ashfield Dam for certain. I was uh, living in my house uh, uh, during Irene and had to leave and uh, because of the water that was all around the house. And of course, I immediately thought of uh, what happens if the Ashfield Dam failed, in which case I never would have gone back to my house because it wouldn't have been there. Um, so regarding the center of town of, Con of Conway, uh, of course, a lot of the water does come right, uh, right through my house or uh, uh, right, right through the old uh, uh, area of the, the Tucker and Cook Reservoir. And I know that there's uh, some interest uh, in looking at that as, as part of a, a floodplain restoration. Uh, and I think that's a great idea. I mean, I think that a, a lot of water probably could be uh, stored there a slight, you know, a, for a brief period of time, and that would release some of the stress on the uh, uh, on the center of on the center of town. Uh, at the same time, I, I uh, like like to pay it uh, pay uh, attention to the history of Conway, and would like to see, for example, uh, the uh, the remains of the dam that's there, uh, sort of somehow incorporated into the redevelopment. And it may be some explanation or whatnot for that, because it's a pretty interesting, interesting structure. Um, so I think that's worth considering. Uh, and then at the other end of the dam, um, I was involved in a study that went on for quite some years uh, regarding the, uh, the big dam there right above the confluence uh, with the Deerfield River. Uh, the idea that was uh, 20 years or maybe 30 years ago uh, to restore that dam, uh, at least to make it uh, useful again. Um, if it's going to be there, it might as well be useful. If it's not going to be there, then obviously it will never be useful. But uh, uh, that could be reconsidered. And uh, I still have a tremendous amount of information uh, that I acquired at that time. I think Bob Van Gelder was actually a part of that project, as I recall. Uh, so, and I think Joe was maybe on the board of selectmen uh, at that time. Uh, at any rate, there's a, a lot of information there. And again, and some mixture of history, uh, history restoration uh, and stabilization um, would be uh, something worth considering. And, and last but not least, uh, even though it's a little bit outside of, uh, of the South River, at least immediately, uh, when you talk about dams failing, uh, it's always worth thinking about the Harriman Reservoir failing. Uh, because if it did, uh, all of the nuclear waste left over from the Roe, uh, Yankee Roe, Vermont, uh, or Yankee Roe plant rather, is uh, still there right next to the Deerfield River. And it would come right down the Deerfield, right next to the South River in Conway. And that would render a lot of what we're doing moot anyhow. And uh, that's an issue that I think uh, I've tried to bring up a number of times and people say, well, that Harriman Reservoir can never fail. Um, well, they said that about uh, uh, Chernobyl too, I think. So uh, those are my comments. Okay. Thanks, James. Thanks, James. And, um, um, and James, uh, Kimberly and everyone, Kimberly put her contact information um, in the chat. So if you want to talk about um, a particular stretch of the river or property that you own along the river and you want to talk about um, or the major tributaries of the South River, um, please be in touch with Kimberly um, and probably CC planning board at townofconway.com would be helpful too. Um, I don't think I have anybody else on a list, the list right now for comments or questions. Is there anyone else that has come up with a comment or question? Either put your name in the chat or wave your hand about or somehow indicate um, and I'll call on you. Uh, Kimberly, 
always glad to have you comment, <laughs> ask questions. You can ask questions of us or you can comment on, yeah. Well, I just wanted to say um, that, you know, the Ashfield Lake Dam was brought up a couple of times. And so as part of this current uh, project, we did have funding to update the engineering designs and cost estimates that the town of Ashfield had done several years ago for the dam. Um, and then also to break the project up into three uh, separate components because we thought that it might be easier to get funding um, for the work. And I've been involved in a preliminary conversation about applying for MVP funding um, to do the phase one uh, project, phase one part of the work for the dam. Um, so I just, uh, like Tom mentioned at the beginning, there are a lot of components to this project um, and there, you know, so I just, I just wanted to put that out there. I don't know if anyone from Ashfield is still, still on the call, but um, yes, we, we're, we're trying to do what we can um, to help the town with that very expensive project. And, you know, they've been working for years to try to, um, you know, get some, get some work done on that. There have also, you know, been um, discussions and it's my understanding that the updated uh, engineering plans do address this is that um, if the um, level of the dam was raised and the repairs were done, there could be some flood, additional flood uh, or stormwater storage that happens because the lake does function as a big, you know, as a big reservoir in that um, sense. So thinking about climate change, thinking about these more um, intense storm events, if that work could be done, that's one piece of the puzzle, so to speak, in making the whole system um, more resilient, more climate resilient. Thanks, Kimberly. Phil, I see you unmuting yourself. Go for it. So just you know, I, and I, I didn't. I, I thought that the raising of the raising of the dam by a foot was had been ruled out. If that's actually part of the repair, that's terrifying because that just impounds even more water. In the case of an of you know what will be a failure, and not just a little bit more water, but magnitudes, it, like it more than doubles the the amount of water that that like, yeah that um. The, 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 so the, Phil, I really, so thank you, Phil. So I encourage you to work with Kimberly on the, so, you know, one of the things that I'm aware of in this meeting is what we in Conway specifically have sort of jurisdiction ability to do. It does seem like the select board could have conversations with Kimberly, could have conversations with the Ashfield, with the Ashfield folks to discuss the Ashfield Lake and the dam and how that's being handled. Um, and, but it's somewhat outside of the scope of this meeting. I mean, I appreciate getting the input from Kimberly around, appreciate you raise, reminding us again and again, that I think it's an important reminder that the Ashfield Lake is, and the dam is, a, is, is of great concern. And then right, how to work to, you know, encourage that to be, um, be okay. So, yeah. Um, are there other comments, questions, uh, things that you want to say, questions you want to ask? Actually, I have, I have a question. I'm curious. Oh, I see Ruth has got her hand, or Don's got his hand up again. Don, Ruth, someone. Um, you have to unmute yourself first. We yeah. cannot hear you. There you go. Kimberly, I have a question. The, the maps that you showed, are these official maps of any kind? Especially the one that shows public water supplies. Um, so that's a great question. So the, the maps that uh, were shown tonight, we use um, information that's available through 
Mass GIS, which is the state's kind of data it's center for this mapping information. Um, so if you notice something on the map that's not correct, uh, we always like to hear about that um, because we try to correct it in house and you know public water supplies are a data layer that oftentimes um, can be uh, confusing. I will say that even though a well like um, is no longer in use, it doesn't necessarily mean unless it's been decommissioned according to the state regulations, it's still considered um, a, a, pub, a public water supply. Okay, thank you, I'll be in touch. Okay. Okay, great. And um, Don, so anyone else before I ask a question? Uh, Don and Ruth, yeah, please mute yourselves. Thanks. Um, anybody else wave your hands about or unmute yourself and say something? Okay, here's my question. Um, after, I mean, I have, I have quite a lot of mental indigestion. There's a lot to digest here. I'm glad we've recorded. I'm glad we're going to get the slides. There's a lot of information here. Um, folks who, you know, the planning board has is we're learning tonight, we're um, gathering information. And one of the things I'm curious about is that whole notion of a river corridor overlay district and doing some variation on creating a bylaw that says, hey, there's this river corridor and here's things that are of concern about it and things you can or can't do in that river corridor. I would love to see maybe a, um, uh, some kind of indication of, yeah, that's really an interesting idea. I think you should pursue that. And you could, and you can show me that by either just doing this, stick your thumbs up, or using the little reactions thing down at the bottom. There's a way to react and put your thumbs up. This is, this is obviously no formal vote. This is just a, hey, yeah, that sounds interesting. You should keep pursuing it. Um, so put your thumbs up if that's interesting to you. Um, I'm seeing a few, three or four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so I'm seeing some. Oh yeah, actually it's some more on there, okay. All right, I'm seeing, so this is something that, that's just a straw poll for us to have a sense that, okay, the planning board will keep talking about this. Um, and is there anybody here who wants to say, there, there doesn't appear to be a down thumbs thumbs down on the reactions i don't think i think the reactions are um you get a but why don't you do um there's actually a little cro a little uh, open mouth facey thing on reactions so if there's something that's like you're like running screaming from the idea of river corridor overlay will you please use the thing that looks like an open mouth yellow uh face thing just to give us a little sense of, you know, and of course, you you know, if you're shy and you don't like doing the little reactions thing, planning board at townofconway.com is the place to let us know what you think. Or if you think, you know, six o'clock tomorrow morning, you're drinking coffee and you think, oh, I should tell them something. Please remember to do planning board at townofconway.com. Uh, is there, is this enough for one night? Is this enough for one night? That you could, oh, Kimberly, Kimberly, there's a wave. I got a thumbs up on that, it was enough. Okay, but Kimberly, go. Um, I, I just wanted to, to say that I have funding through this grant to work, spend a whole lot of time with the planning board and the town if that's the way you decide to um, go forward. So between now and June 30th, I, am available to have more of these discussions, to take deeper dives, make maps, do whatever the planning board, um, if you decide to, to move forward with this at any level, I'm, I'm available to um, help and would love to, to help you. Okay, so thank you. So that could be, right, it could mean that we would have another meeting very specifically focused on example, looking at a draft bylaw or, um, you know, having, yeah, so that could be something that we could consider. Um, so, um, and then, um, 
J uh, so there's another comment. Um, James Manuel asked one more comment. What about beavers? Like, yeah, if I could just supporting the beavers to make more dams or <laughs> what are we talking about beavers? What, what about beavers? Well, my section of the river is frequently beset by beavers. Beset. And I, uh, I know I'm supposed to like beavers. You know, my kids used to have a book called Ranger Rick or something like that about how wonderful beavers are but they are actually incredibly destructive. And uh, they're maybe the cause of, I would say a second to Irene, uh, the beavers in my part, in my neck of the woods have caused more erosion and the source of more erosion than anything else because they build the dam and then the water gets a little high and then the dam it will wash out sort of along the side of the dam. So, you know, I mean, there's a whole story here. I understand about beavers in Massachusetts and history, and some people don't like trapping beavers. And you know, what do you do? But it is a real issue that uh, you know, if you're going to really do anything about the river, you got to have a policy on the beavers. Okay, so, so that's, that's something to consider. And it seems like I think there's, I think there are a variety of beaver management kind of practices that are done. And I don't know if FERCOG knows about that or Fish and Wildlife knows about that, but yeah, beaver manage right. Beaver management is part of right. <laughs> I, and I yeah right. I don't know if the River Corridor Overlay District could apply to beavers or not, <laughs> and whether we could get them. Yes, Kimberly's shaking her head. All right, I'm I'm getting a little tired and punchy and um, sleepy, and so if I start making jokes about beavers and zoning bylaws, that's a sign that it's time to end. Right? Is this? Am I getting? Is there anybody else? This has been, I want to thank Kimberly a ton. That was so informative, very helpful. Really appreciate Michelle's showing us that video and those photos that you took that Kimberly showed. Really appreciate everybody's questions and comments. Um, I'm sorry we're not at the town hall um, and having, and I would be handing out extra cookies at this point, but we don't have to fold up all the folding chairs and the tables. So that's a good thing or drive in the cold. So thanks for um, thanks for showing up for a Zoom meeting and um, really appreciate it. Planning board at townofconway.com. I'm going to put um, Kimberly's information again on the um, in the in the uh, chat so that if you didn't get a chance to um, no, take note of that, it's over there in the chat again. Co communicate with her. Communicate with us. That's what this is all about, information back and forth. Um, and this will be, there, we'll, I don't know when this recording is gonna get up on the, um, on the town website, but it'll be sometime presumably in the next few days. Um, and uh, so please check out that, um, like it'll be within a week at the latest, presumably. And, um, and also, if remember the what Tom was saying about on the town website, if you go to government departments, town administrator, then there's uh, you can see places to the links to the municipal vulnerabilities uh, project plan and to the um, uh, what was it called HMP hazard mitigation plan. Um, so. Lots, you know, lots of homework if you want it. Go for it. Um, enough? Enough? I'm going to ask the planning board to stay on just for a sec, just to check out. But everybody else, thanks. Have a good evening. Stay healthy and safe. Um, wear your ice grippers and you know, all that stuff. So thanks. <laughs>